Hey there, my friends. It's John Henry Sheridan, and I'm back again with another episode of a Thoughtful Pause series. As you can see, I finished painting my wall. Let me show you. Okay. So my last video, which was process over product, I was talking about enjoying the process, and I did. And there's a product, a finished painted wall. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm glad I enjoyed the process because now that it's done, it's done. So, uh, what do I have for you today? A very simple one that I feel like I probably created a video with the same title in the past. I don't know, but um, what I'd like you to consider is these words: deep self-acceptance. Deep self-acceptance. So. I've done videos about self-acceptance before in the past uh, under the Love Dinosaur Talks, maybe as a thoughtful pause, I don't remember. Um, a lot of what I talk about regards self-acceptance. Uh, I say deep because I, when I, uh, so I was, some of you may know, I practice Buddhism, I chant Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, I'm a Nichiren Buddhist. This isn't about Buddhism, this video, but that's who I am. Okay, so it's kind of important to know, perhaps, when you, to understand where I'm coming from. So anyway, I'm chanting. And, you know, Buddhism is fundamentally a philosophy about peace and, uh, what's the word? Um, it's pacifist. So, how can we find the way forward where everyone benefits and creates the most value uh, with the minimal damage possible? And even to say considered damage is sort of not even uh, a consideration, just more how can we create the most value? How can we uh, enable everybody to benefit from the situation at hand, whatever that situation is? So that's the kind of thought process I come from. And so often since I'm doing these videos at night, I'm uh, doing them right after I chant, do my evening chanting. So it gives me time to really process some of uh, various thoughts which I'd like to express. As I go throughout each day, usually I'm taking in new information, um, just, just because it's what I want to do these days. There are some time periods when I don't want to take in new information, uh, but these days I have been. So I'm inspired by a lot of new ideas, and I often want to just share the new information I learned, but I really try to temper myself, like, you know, like a hammer or sword, and, and try to f work out the impurities and say, what is it? that John Henry Sheridan wants to share from his heart that feels, that sits right. Not just what new information do I want to pass on, because that's hairy. That, that's, I don't want to use the word dangerous, but that gets me into hot water, because sometimes I share things that I haven't fully processed and owned yet, and then I may receive some backlash that uh, I could have avoided if I was more uh, true to my own pure voice. So that's kind of what it's about. Um, so I, I want to talk about some of the dark stuff that's coming to light in our society. Child trafficking, uh, um, pandemic... Uh, the Illuminati and all sorts of quote-unquote conspiracy theory stuff. Um, and uh, what's, oh, you know, mandatory vaccinations, all this stuff that that can ruffle feathers. And I'm not saying one should think one way or another. And I'm not going to talk about it because the deeper and also shadow work I've been hearing a little bit in the videos I choose to watch, um, the deeper thing that underlies all of it 
and again, I'm coming, trying to coming at it from the Buddhist perspective of uh, how can I sidestep the punch so to use that energy to, to not only to not take my opponent down, but rather to um, re, uh, to use the energy of the punch coming my way to somehow help the person delivering the punch to be in a better situation <laughs> after they punch. Or in order to see, and what I mean by that is to see more truthfully uh, their actions, not to just be enraged further or justify themselves further, but to see more truthfully their actions. So rather than me deflecting it and hurting myself, because punch that hits hurts, to somehow go with it and then in the process teach, express a principle rather than saying what is, uh, or speaking from emotion, um, you're this, you're that, the principle of such and such, when, when you light a fire and you put your hand in the fire, it burns. So that's not, that's not um, didactic, uh, dogmatic. That's a principle. And once you understand the concept, you just simply use it to your own benefit. So I think Buddhism works like that. Any true philosophy in life works like that. It's principle-based where it appeals to people's logic in their heart at the same time and their sense of faith in something much larger. So back to the point. Deep self-acceptance. With the emotions that are going around nowadays. And I suspect there are many difficult emotions floating around. I know I'm getting some, and I don't like it. Today I dealt with a lot of t extreme tiredness, fatigue, and last night and the night before as well. I maybe has to do with painting the wall, but this is like, this is uh, something unusual to me. It felt very weird and scary you know like why am I so tired I couldn't motivate myself to do much at all um <clears throat> so there are different energies going around from what I understand and we're going to be because we're in this environment together we're going to be processing these kind of newer subtle energies that are in the collective so sometimes things will be affecting us directly because of our own actions. Like say I eat uh, a bad, <coughs> excuse me, meaning a bad diet, <clears throat> unhealthy diet for years and then I get chest pains. That's a direct thing to me, but maybe I'll just get chest pains for one day because it's some weird energy that's in the environment that's affecting me and then it goes away, never comes back. So sometimes things like of course, if you think it's a real symptom, you go check it out. But if you don't sense it that way, like this is just, I feel weird today, and then or for two days and it's gone, maybe that's just because so much is shifting in society with the energies of people losing, you know, how many 10% of Oregon uh, fled their homes, you know, the, these fires that are burning and the election and what's happening with school this year it's September you know so also being 9-11 people are remembering the past and maybe difficult memories so deep self-acceptance going back to that <clears throat> so when I think about that concept deep self self-acceptance it means accepting all that I am in my shadow whatever things that I criticize about other people, whether consciously or subconsciously, and also whatever it is that I am in my glory, all the great things that I admire in other people that I also have in my character. So when you accept both, you could what it usually comes down to for me is like, hey, 
I'm just a person, just a human being that has incredible, you could say infinite potential, just like everyone else. And I happen to have made a choice early on in my life that I continue to make, renew, which is I'd like to see things truthfully. So I ask deep questions. And I see that in myself there is the potential for infinite darkness as well as infinite light. I haven't been feeding that. But I could see just even the seed of it exists. So it helps me to at least not um, go for blood when I see something in society that seems really horrible. I could I pause to reflect what in my life had I made different decisions at a very impressionable age how much far off into a, an unhealthy path could I have gone? And then also on different token, when I see people who are like sort of me, ahead of me in terms of where I'd like to be in my life, maybe. I also see that I've, plant, I've planted seeds that they've planted and maybe they have a few more years of... Um, cultivating their crops, they're cultivating their seeds than I have. So I could see that where I could potentially go. And of course, I don't have to be like anybody else. Anyways, it comes with, you know, when I was really tired today, I had to accept it. I didn't like it. I didn't like feeling like so tired that I couldn't even rest. Resting felt like uncomfortable. I don't know if that makes any sense. Uh, laying down like it wasn't doing it, but getting up was like almost hurt. <laughs> so don't I'm not don't worry don't worry about me I'm okay. But uh, I just want to share that you know because I know many of us may be experiencing weird physical things. So anyway, deep self acceptance that means love yourself as you are, warts and all, flaws and all, and uh, I suppose with that comes uh, gratitude. Just be grateful for what you have today. It's, and I'm speaking to myself, of course, always as I say these videos, because right before I post them, I listen back to them, so it's like this person speaking to me. Um, I listen back to you know, create the final file. Um, love yourself. And if it's hard to deeply accept yourself, you know, uh, I tend to write things down, lists of uh, my what I perceive as my weaknesses or my dark side. And then it just naturally flows into my strengths and my bright side. And sometimes I keep them for reference and I look back on them. A lot of times I rip it up after keeping it near my altar for a few days. It's just good to see the whole picture <clears throat> and realize how much potential we have to go any which way. And then choose to feed the side that, that you can be proud of and um, feel good about. Feed that lighter, healthier, humane side and thrive. So that's what I have to share today. If it was a little all over the place, um, that's where I'm at. I thought it would be better to share something than nothing. Uh, so. Take care. Be well. Uh, keep smiling. And I'll see you next time.